So look at something here called Markov chains. We're going to use matrices to do it. Uh, jump straight into an example. Let's talk about uh, two kinds of people. Some people like to drink Coke and some people like to drink Pepsi. Uh, and let's say uh, that 70% of people like Coke and 30% of people like Pepsi. Uh, now, that's not a choice for life. You can say to yourself, oh, okay, I've been drinking Coke for a while now. Pepsi looks better. Or... I've been drinking Pepsi for a little while now, Coke looks better. So you might change your mind. Now, let's take a look at what happens if people change their mind here. So I'm going to create a little table. Um, now, I'm going to create like a from column, or sorry, a from up the top, and two here. So people might decide that they're going to change from Coke to Pepsi from Coke to Pepsi. So let's say that 10% um, of people who drink Coke currently change from Coke to Pepsi in any given month or year. Uh, okay. So that means that 90% of people will stay loyal to Coke. They're going to go from month to month, they're going to drink Coke in January and then in Coke in February. They stay with it. Now, we can do it for Pepsi as well. People who um, are drinking Pepsi today, next month, they're still going to be drinking Pepsi. That might be like a 0.7. Now, if we look here, Pepsi to Coke, uh, that means that if 70% of people are staying Pepsi to Pepsi, then 30% of people must be changing from Pepsi to Coke. They must be saying, no, Pepsi sucks now, I'm going for Coke instead. You can see we've got a 2x2 two two matrix here. Uh, we can also express this as a matrix. Now, let's look, let's not think about matrices too much, but let's look at what this is going to look like after a month. So, at the moment, it's 70% Coke, 30% Pepsi. Now, the people who drink Coke after the next month, is going to be equal to the 70% who drink Coke times the 90% who stay plus the 30% who drink Pepsi times the 0.3 who switch to Coke. And the amount of people who drink Pepsi is going to be equal to the 30% of people who currently drink Pepsi, Pepsi to Pepsi, and stay with Pepsi. So that's going to be 0.3 times 0.7, plus the 70% of people who drink Coke and switch to Pepsi. All right, and we can put that into our calculator and get a number. All right, so if I look at that, it's going to be point. 7.2 for Coke and 0.28 for Pepsi. So you can see that under these conditions with a starting point of 70% Coke, 30% Pepsi and this change or transition matrix, uh, we're going to end up with slightly more Coke drinkers at the end of the month and slightly less Pepsi drinkers at the end of the month. Now, if you look at this calculation here, you look at this calculation here, what this actually was was um, matrix multiplication. So let's do it slightly more formally now. So these are called states. So I'm going to call this state zero. This is our first state, the first uh, condition. So Coke 0.7, Pepsi 0.3. Now let's calculate state one. State one is going to be equal to what's called the transition matrix. Uh, so the transition matrix, 0 0.9 times 0 0.1, 0 0.3 times 0.7, times state 0. And that will give us our Coke Pepsi of 0 0.72, 0 0.28. You can obviously put that matrix into your calculator if you want. Now, let's look at what state 2 would be. 
So if this was January, and this is February, state two is going to be March. Now, I f it looks like Coke's going to increase their, their share, right? So the transition matrix remains the same. 0.7 but now we need to multiply it by the state 1 all right let's type that into our calculator and see what pops out all right so that when I type that into my calculator I get 0 0.732 0 0.268 all right, so you can see Coke is still gaining ground. They've gone from 0.7 to 0.72 to 0.732. Uh, let's look at the third state here. 0 0.9, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0.7 times state 2. 0 0.26. Eight. Calculator and let's see what answer we get. And we're getting point uh, seven three nine two point two six zero eight. All right, let's take a look at what's happened to the Coke share over the last uh, four months. Started at point seven, went to point seven three two. Oh, sorry, point seven two, point seven three two, point seven three nine two. It's increasing, but the rate of increase is slowing down. Point zero two. Uh, 0 0.012, 0 0.007, something like that. Now, notice what's happening. Uh, tra transition matrix times initial state. Transition matrix times initial state. Transition matrix times initial state. We can speed up this entire process. So if I wanted to know state 50, let's say, we can do this, we can find state 50 by using our transition matrix to the power of 50 and then multiplying it by our initial state. Now, if you type that into your calculator, you should get something like Let's check it out. 0 0.75, 0 0.25. Now, if I type in uh, state 100, all right, so 100 months have passed of all of these changes happening. That's going to be equal to, again, the transition to the power of 100 times the initial state. Now, if I type that into my calculator, you would expect to see some amount of change here, however small, but in fact, you do not. Okay, now all Markov chains, this is a Markov chain, with these transition matrices and initial matrices, will eventually reach what's called a steady state. So, if we look at our transition matrix here, we start at Coke 0.7, Pepsi 0.3. You can see it looks like Coke's going to gain ground, and it gains a little bit of ground, but once it gains ground to 0.75%, it stays there and it will stay there until the transition matrix changes. Now the transition matrix might change, Coke might get a really good advertising policy, Pepsi might change their formula, whatever it might be. But until the transition matrix changes, we have reached our steady state. All right, that is Markov chains with matrices.